the whole point about this car. You get in a gentleman, you exit a bloke. That's not always the case, because you got in a girl, and you got out a girl. I don't know what to say. If you've tried restoring or rebuilding a car in your garage, you'd know car restoration is a time-consuming endeavor. We're talking about 1,000 to 2,000 hours of manpower. However, on Car SOS, deadbeat cars are usually given a new lease on life in 18 days. Since the series premiered in 2013, Car SOS has gained a vast following, standing out in the sea of car flipping series in the reality TV industry. It's one of the most beloved and respected shows in the car restoration genre thanks to the high quality of work evident on the cars and amazing cast members like Fuzz Townshend and Tim Shaw. Fuzz is one half of the Car SOS duo. He's a modern day hero responsible for helping car owners finish projects they've been unable to complete themselves. However, he's also a drummer, motorist journalist, and a former college lecturer. How did a musician slash teacher build a successful career as a reality TV personality in the car restoration niche? Join us as we reveal what really happened to Fuzz Townshend from Car SOS. I'm getting wet here, so let's get it loaded Yeah, up. yeah, I'm, I'm getting wet and cold, and I've been out here for a while. <laughs> Come on then, let's get it loaded. While everyone knows him as Fuzz, then yes, people have weird names these days. Fuzz's parents weren't wicked enough to name him Fuzz. It's a nickname he got during his school years, thanks to his unique fuzzy afro hairstyle. Fuzz was born John Richard Keith Townshend in July 1964. His initial career path was about something other than cars, although there's a car in his story. Fuzz's journey as a musician began at age 11, when his mother participated in a national newspaper competition and won a brand new Vauxhall Chevette. Fortunately for everyone who has ever had their car featured on Car SOS, no one in the Townshend household had a driver's license at that time. So instead of taking her brand new car home, Fuzz's mom opted to accept the prize in cash so she could fund her son's future. Prior to winning that cash prize, Fuzz had been making drums out of cardboard boxes since he was seven. That cash prize steered Fuzz into music when his mom bought him a drum kit. Around the time Fuzz got his first proper drum kit, he also started his journey in the automobile world, helping out in his cousin's garage during the holidays. Two years later, Fuzz made his stage debut with the local jazz musician Al Reed. Fuzz played solo gigs during his school years, and before the 1970s came to a close, Fuzz was already playing with college bands and local clubs. After finishing his secondary school education, Fuzz started an apprenticeship with West Midlands Passenger Transport Executive, a local bus company. While he was working on buses, he didn't give up on his musical career. He released his first charting single while working at the Transport Services Dudley Branch. Fuzz also recorded two live sessions with BBC Radio 1 and joined forces with Ranking Roger and General Public. It was long before Fuzz's talent caught the attention of a local indie pop band, Pop Will Eat Itself. Fuzz left General Public and joined this new band, going on a successful North American tour with Nine Inch Nails. Soon after, he would have charting entries in the UK singles and album charts. Fuzz had a solo release, Hello Darlin', which peaked at number 51 on the UK charts. A year after that achievement, he signed a deal with Echo Records. With funding from the label, Fuzz began working on his first solo album, Far In. It was released in UK in 1999, and two years later, it made it to the US under Sabrina Silverberg's Stinky Records label. In 2002, Fuzz released another album. However, in 2004, he put his solo music career on standby and opted to lecture in music technology and music practice. Right around the time Fuzz started lecturing, his old music band Pop Will Eat Itself got back together and started playing again. After a few years as a college instructor, Fuzz began working for Practical Classics as a journalist, rising through the ranks to the lucrative post of technical editor. However, in 2011, Fuzz Townshend's career would undergo a radical change. Car gurus like Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May started their motoring addiction by writing about cars. Fuzz Townshend started just like those guys. After rising to the position of technical editor at Practical Classics, Fuzz went freelance and began nursing a hands-on feel for classic car restoration. That feeling gave birth to Westgate Classics. Westgate Classics gave way to a garage network solely aimed at classic cars and called it Classic Friendly LTD. As for appearing on Car SOS, that happened when a TV production company invited Fuzz to do a screen test audition for a new show that was held in his garage. 
Having made a name for himself in the automobile industry, Buzz landed the role without much ado, and his businesses began featuring as the show's location. Car SOS airs on Moors and Channel 4 in the UK. The premise behind it is simple, but one of the reasons why it was awarded most inspirational show at the National Reality TV Awards in 2018. The show is presented by Fuzz and Tim. Fuzz, the master mechanic in charge of repairing, feddling, and restoring one cherished car to its former glory, leaves Tim to locate low-cost parts. With the help of a specialist car restoration team, they restore privately owned classic cars in Europe and the UK. Most car restoration themed reality TV shows will look for run down classic cars they can buy cheap and then flip for a profit after it's been restored. Others take on projects from customers, getting paid to restore the car to the customer's taste and budget. Car SOS is different because it's a better version of Pimp My Ride. The show takes privately owned classic cars from owners who can restore them by themselves due to financial or medical reasons and fixes them up. These cars and their owners are usually nominated by their relatives or friends without their knowledge. Buzz has been around since the show's inception, appearing in over 100 episodes so far. As host, the show has stuck to the same format under its guidance aside from a particular episode in Series 3, where the team restored a 1962 Austin Healey Sebring Sprite with the owner's knowledge. This Austin Healey was driven by famous racers like Sir Sterling Moss and Steve McQueen. The car went to the British Motor Museum, which used to be known as the Heritage Motor Center after its restoration. The team at Car SOS had to take special care while restoring this car because it was the last of its kind in the world. The only other Austin Healey Sebring Sprite was destroyed in a race. Car SOS is inspiring because it's a show that helps people's dreams come true. Fans have always wondered who pays for the restoration since the owners do not have to pay a dime. In an interview, Buzz revealed that the restorations are paid for by the show itself. Although it's unclear how much of a budget the restoration staff is given, there is certainly extensive planning ahead of time that allows them to effectively complete the project in a timely and cost-effective manner. However, Buzz points out that the team always tries to stay within an assigned budget, but sometimes doing what's necessary means going over, and they can't help it. While these budget privileges distinguish Car SOS from other car flipping centered shows, the lack of constraints while the restoration team does its job explains why the show has been so successful. Car SOS has aired its 11th season, and it still looks like it's going strong. Buzz and team will still serve as the show's presenters. However, on the personal side, things are not the same for Fuzz. Fuzz's Garage Network Classic Friendly, which cater to safety inspections for classic cars exempt from Ministry of Transport tests and standardized servicing regimes, had closed shop. Although there were reports of Fuzz expanding the services offered by his Garage Network to auction and online auction vehicles, those reports were proven to be false when the Garage confirmed in the spring of 2019 that Fuzz had left the business and had no further dealings with its direction or trading. Three years prior to this announcement, Fuzz left his first business, Westgate Classics, to found a new garage called Two Todd Classics LTD, which has been known as SOS Workshop LTD since 2018. Although Fuzz no longer works as part of Classic Friendly, he still maintains relevance in the classic car industry by appearing on Car SOS and regularly featuring in Classic Car Weekly and Practical Weekly. He resides in Shropshire and promotes classic automobile safety projects such as Classic Aware. Away from the show and classic cars, Fuzz has been with his wife Cressida for about a decade, and they have two children. Atticus was born in June 2019 and Pixie in 2020. Fuzz also has an elder daughter named Honor Doro Townshend from his previous wife.